Hello lovely students and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I'm going to be teaching you lots and lots of advanced phrases that you can use in daily conversation. We are going to take basic phrases and I'm going to give you advanced alternatives so you can really expand your vocabulary. Before we get started I'd like to remind you that there is as always a free PDF that goes with today's lesson. It contains everything we're going to talk about today, the full list of alternatives, plus an extra quiz at the end so you can put what you've learned into practice. If you'd like to download that free PDF, it is very helpful. Just click on the link in the description box, enter your name and your email address, you sign up to my mailing list, the PDF will arrive directly into your inbox, and automatically after that, every week, you will receive my free lesson PDFs. You'll also receive my news, my course updates and my offers. It's a free service and you can unsubscribe at any time. This video is going to be perfect for improving your vocabulary skills. If you'd like to expand your vocabulary even further, I have designed a 30 day challenge especially, specifically for you, for students of English that want to improve and expand their vocabulary. They want to speak with that beautiful, rich English vocabulary. Let me present to you the Vocabulary Expansion Challenge. It's a powerful name, right? It's a bloody powerful course. How does it work? Well, each day we take a simple, everyday concept that you will find in your daily life. Moods and feelings, likes and dislikes, mistakes and apologies, memory and learning. We take the words that you likely already know and we supercharge them. From those simple everyday words, we show you all of the synonyms, all of the related idioms. We create a map of related vocabulary for you to learn easily. And the most important part is that we teach them to you in context, through story. This is the vital part of this challenge. You will learn well over 250 rich new words and phrases to drastically expand your vocabulary in just 30 days. You'll take over 650 exercise questions to really help you remember and retain what you've learned in those lessons. When you purchase the course, you get lifetime access to the course content. It will never be taken away from you. You can review it, you can retake the lessons, you can retake the exercises. We also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. If you try the course and it's too easy or it's too difficult or it's not what you're looking for, let us know, we'll give you your money back, no problem. We're running a special price if you'd like to find out more, just click on the link in the description box. It's all there for you. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Firstly, let's talk about introductions. Imagine you're in a business meeting and you want to introduce your colleague to someone you know. A simple way to do this is to say, this is my colleague, Sarah. It's fine, it's just a little bit plain and boring. We have some better alternatives. You could also say, have you met Sarah? We work together. Or have you been introduced to Sarah? If you want to introduce yourself to someone, a simple way to say this is, hello, I'm Lucy. Obviously you would insert your own name. This is fine, but of course there are some other ways to say this. You could say, I don't think we've been introduced. Or I don't think we've met. I'm Lucy. Finally, let's imagine that you notice that the person you're talking to doesn't know many people. Luckily, you do know some people. So you could offer, do you need any introductions? Do you need to be introduced to anyone? Let's move on to alternative ways of saying, it's nice to meet you. When you meet someone for the first time, it's polite to say, it's nice to meet you, or just nice to meet you. An alternative way to say this is, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. There's something I really like about the word pleasure. I think it's the zh sound, pleasure. This is quite a formal phrase. You might want to use it in a work environment. We also have a less formal version, which is glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you. Glad means happy, pleased. 
Finally, a really good alternative to use with someone that you have spoken to via email or over the phone or via Zoom. It's great to finally meet you in person. It's great to finally meet you in person. I feel like I know you already because we've spoken so much via email. It means that you're happy to see them face to face and not just through a telephone line or a computer screen. Let's move on to another vital part of conversation. How are you? How are you? One of the most overused questions in my opinion. How are you is suitable for all occasions. You can use it with your CEO, with your boss, with your colleagues, with your friends and family. But if you're in less formal situations, then you might want to say something informal like, how's it going? Or how's everything with you? You could also say, what's going on? Or what have you been up to? That's a really common question. What have you been up to is what have you been doing lately? Both of these questions invite the person you're speaking to to update you on what they've been doing since you last saw them. Finally, you could ask, how's life? Or how's life treating you? That's very informal. I like that one. Okay, we have some great options for how are you, but what about the response? I'm fine, thanks. It's just a little bit boring. If you are also getting bored of repeating the same phrase over and over again, I have some alternatives. Ticking along. I'm ticking along. This means, yeah, still going. Another really popular one is can't complain. Nothing's going wrong. I can't complain. We also have same old, same old. These are all ways of saying that things aren't great, but they're okay. I'm fine. I'm okay. They're very neutral answers to how are you. If you want to give a really positive answer, if you're having a really great day, then you could say something like, I couldn't be better. I couldn't be better. Or on the opposite hand, if you're having a terrible time, you could say, could be better. I could be better. I'm not doing that well, thank you. Remember that English speakers don't often give honest answers when they're asked, how are you? So you know, the house could have burnt down the night before and they'll still say something like, could be better, yeah, could be better. Let's move on to the next question. Where do you work? When you're getting to know someone, a really common question is, where do you work? There are other ways of saying this. A really common one in British English is, what do you do? What do you do? That's shortened down from what do you do for a living? If you know someone quite well and you know that they've recently changed jobs or they might change jobs quite often, you could ask a question such as, where are you working right now? Or what are you doing for work at the moment? Or even, did you end up getting that promotion? Or did you end up getting that job? You'd only ask that if they'd already mentioned that they were in the running for a new job. Another really common question is, where are you from? Where are you from? And we have some alternate ways of saying that. If you want to make it sound more natural, you could say, whereabouts are you from? That's kind of the rough area. Whereabouts are you from? If you're wondering if someone's from the same area that you're in right now, you could say something like, are you local? Are you from around this local area? Are you from around here? Or a really informal one, are you from this neck of the woods? Neck of the woods means local area common British slang. You can use the idiom neck of the woods in lots of different questions like how's the weather in your neck of the woods in your local area and of course weather my favorite topic as a British person brings me on to my next topic weather. <laughs> the number one small talk topic in the UK is weather. I find myself mentioning it all the time I can't help it it's like word vomit I don't know what to say, there's an awkward moment, so I mention the weather. A really common British phrase is, lovely weather today, lovely weather today. Alternatively, assuming you have sunshine, could be, beautiful weather out, beautiful weather out. Beautiful out today, isn't it? Beautiful out, meaning it's lovely outside today. Unfortunately, most often it is not beautiful outside in the UK. <laughs> we can say phrases like, oh, bit dreary today. Dreary means dull, grey, a little bit depressing. Oh, it's so dreary today. One thing we possibly like doing more than talking about the current weather is talking about the future weather, what it might be like. Our weather forecasts are hilariously inaccurate. Hilariously. I don't know why we bother with them. It says it will rain, it's glorious sunshine, it says it will be sunshine, it's a thunderstorm, it snows. We love talking about the weather forecast, so we could say something like, can you believe it's going to be 27 degrees this weekend? 
or I can't believe it's going to rain all day tomorrow. Or well, my personal favorite, I've heard it's going to snow overnight. There is nothing more exciting than opening your window and seeing loads of snow, unless you have somewhere to be. Not exciting. Okay, let's discuss alternatives for the question, do you want to? Asking someone if they want to do something. Do you want to go for a coffee? Do you want to have fish and chips tonight? An informal but very British sounding alternative is, do you fancy? Do you fancy? Do you fancy going for a coffee? Do you fancy fish and chips tonight? Hear me say, do you? I almost say, yeah, yeah. Do you fancy a coffee? Do you fancy fish and chips tonight? You could also replace do you fancy with what do you think about? What do you think about going for a coffee? What do you think about having fish and chips tonight? Finally, if you've already made a decision about something but you want to check that someone agrees with you, you could say any objections to fish and chips tonight? Or any objections to a coffee? Have you got any objection to a coffee? And then you'll hope they say that'll be lovely because you've already ordered them. <laughs> Let's move on to the question, do you agree? Do you agree? It's the easiest way to ask someone's opinion on something, but there are some really good alternatives. We can say, what do you think? Or the really British one, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? I reckon that we shouldn't go. Both of these are quite informal, but we do have some nice formal ones for formal situations, such as, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Or I'm interested to know what you think about this idea. What about changing the topic? It's often one of the most awkward things that we have to do, second to ending a conversation, which we'll talk about later. Instead of saying, can I change the topic? Or can we talk about something else? We could say something like, I wanted to ask you about X. I wanted to ask you about the new cafe in town. Another really good one is speaking of, speaking of. If the other person mentions something that we could use to change the topic, we could say, ah, speaking of that, what about this? Speaking of lunch, have you tried the new cafe in town? Another option, that reminds me. That reminds me, how's Julie? You can also use the phrase, before I forget. Ah, before I forget, I must ask you this and ask something completely different. Finally, you could say, while I've got you here. While I've got you here, I want to ask you about a new project. You'll often hear that phrase used in business contexts. The final conversation phrase is goodbye. We have some really good alternatives for this word. One of the most common alternatives is see you later. If we're saying this informally, we can shorten it to see ya. See you later, see ya. But if you've been chatting to someone for too long and you want to leave, I have some really good examples. One is, I must be off. Oh, I must be off, paired with looking at your watch. Make sure you're actually wearing a watch because I keep doing that and I'm not wearing one and it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Another, I've got to run, but it was great to see you. Or, it's been lovely chatting, but I need to shoot off. These three phrases, tell the other person that you have somewhere else to be. Of course, that doesn't need to be true, but that secret can stay between you and me. Another option you can use is, let's catch up properly sometime. Meaning, I don't have enough time to properly chat to you now, let's do it another time. In the office, people will often say, right, let's get back to it, or let's get back to work. British people will often slap their knees or slap the table and say, right, right, I've got to go, or right, I must get some work done. So on that note, right, I must get back to it. I need to do some more work today. And you have some more work to do as well. You need to download the free PDF and take the quiz. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Instagram, English with Lucy, my English Instagram, and at Lucy, my personal Instagram. I've also got my website, englishwithlucy.co.uk where I've got a fantastic pronunciation tool. It's a phonemic chart and you can click on the phonemes and hear me pronounce those phonemes and words that contain those phonemes. I've also got my vlogging channel, Lucy Bella, where you can follow our lives here in the English countryside. And importantly, every single vlog is fully subtitled so that you can use them for listening practice and expanding your vocabulary. You can also check out my English courses. That's englishwithlucy.co.uk slash courses. There are lots there to choose from. I will see you soon for another lesson.